Don't believe anyone who tells you they leave all preconceived notions out of a review. As reviewers, we try to be as objective as possible, but just as normal humans, opinions of bias will inevitably slip in. I began my review of the Moto X Pure Edition really hoping I'd like it. It checked off almost all of my box must-haves. Stock Android, well, almost, check. Supposedly great camera, check. QHD screen, check. Quick charge, check. Expandable storage, check. Great value, check. On the other side of my imaginary chart though, we're missing a fingerprint sensor, wireless charging, and removable battery. So after five days of using the Moto X Pure Dish as my daily driver, which side wins? And most important question I'm gonna answer throughout this whole thing is, would I buy it? I'm John Ranger from Techno Buffalo, and this is my review of the Moto X Pure Edition. As I do with all my reviews, let me give a disclaimer. I use this guy for five days as my daily driver on AT&T. Motorola sent us a code to design the device of our choosing. Brandon, who did the written portion, also used it for five separate days, also on AT&T. If you want to see more detail on anything I'm going to talk about or see full gallery samples and beautiful HD, hit the link down below and check out our full written review. I'm going to break this review down into three separate categories. What I like, what I don't, and other impressions that don't fit into one of those two sections. I'm generally a pretty happy person, so let's start with the likes. The software. Motorola has the best take on Android, period. Even better than Google's own Nexus devices. It's almost stock with some really useful and unobtrusive additions. This is essentially 5.1.1 with some apps pre-installed, and those apps are great. Motorola's quick notifications on its ambient lock screen are insanely useful. The Moto app made the phone feel like mine. It recognized my voice and did some really cool things. When I asked it to take a selfie, it brought up the camera, did a countdown, and snapped away. It knew when I was driving, it read messages aloud. It goes way deeper, but the moral, it's really helpful. If you like stock Android, I bet you're gonna dig this. Speakers aren't something I usually talk about in reviews, but these front firing ones sound great. Loud without being tinny and maintain the fidelity of the music. If you're watching videos, you're gonna have to turn the volume down to get so loud. Or if you're the kind of person who uses their phone on speaker when in public, you can now annoy many people you never could before. Next on the likes is Monomaker. We had a blast customizing our Iron Man themed phone to make it truly ours. From picking the backs and accent colors to personalized message when you boot up, this phone felt like mine or any other. Camera! Here's one that hasn't been on our likes list for any Moto device for really as far back as I can remember. The camera's not the best camera phone ever that Motorola claimed in their announcement, but it's really competitive with the best, and that's a gigantic improvement from where they were. 21 megapixel sensor takes good pictures in normal light, and even does a good job in low light. It captures plenty of detail, and you could easily replace a point and shoot as your go-to camera. Again, if you want to see more detail or check out the whole gallery in full glorious resolution, hit the link down below. I know this is going to matter to a lot of you, but Micro SD is here! I also really like the double-sided design of the SIM slot and micro SD card slot. It doesn't appear to take up any extra room and makes me wonder why all companies don't adopt something similar. I'm adding the screen to my list of likes because it's the best screen Moto's ever done. Images look clear, text looks incredibly crisp, and videos and games look awesome. But in the interest of full disclosure, I started testing the device immediately after using a Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge Plus. So while the screen does look really good, it's definitely not as good as Samsung's. But when you pick this phone up, you'll hopefully won't be coming from a Samsung screen, and in that case, the screen's going to look good to you. Starting at 399 this is a killer deal. Moto is definitely competing in a more crowded field than they ever were in years past. And it's still a great value, especially when you throw in Moto Maker. Last on my list of likes is turbo power charging. While it is annoying, the brick is freaking huge and the cable is permanently attached, it does charge super fast. And because there's always a flip side, let's talk about the dislikes, since this certainly isn't a device without its flaws. Because it's on my mind, let's just start with battery. 3000 mAh battery is predictably not awesome. Now granted, using turbo charging helped a lot, but when I'm out, I don't always have that giant power brick with me. Wireless charging would have really helped here. You get through a full day, but you're gonna have to change how you use the device. For me, that meant turning down my brightness and not endlessly scrolling through a newsfeed as often as I do. My wife was happy. I wish I had better battery life. I know software is in my likes, but the Moto camera app is not good. I don't like tapping the screen to take a picture. I kept thinking it would just focus it. It's a personal thing I understand. Uh, so I ended up switching over to Google's own camera app. So I guess points to Android for letting the user choose their default app. So here's something new that I have never mentioned in my years reviewing phones. Vibration. The vibration motor is so loud on this phone, it's almost like its own ringtone. Forget trying to be subtle in a movie. If this thing is on vibrate mode, everyone five rows away from you is going to know someone's calling. The phone also feels a little bit top heavy. It's not going to fall out of your hands by any means, but just wait it a little bit weirdly. Thought I'd mention it. The lack of mirror pin sensor, especially now that Android Pay is out, is a big omission. I got really used to it on my iPhone and Samsung devices, and not having it here made the device feel really lacking to me. Maybe if you're coming from a device that doesn't have it, you won't miss it. If you're coming from one that does, it is a glaring omission, even for this price point. So this next thing is nitpicky, I, I know, but I can't be alone here. I love the Google Now launcher. My favorite part is just swiping right to get to Google Now. 
I have Nova configured to almost mirror it, but no matter what gesture shortcuts I set or what widget I put there, I still just like the convenience of Google Now just a screen away. The Moto X comes with Google Now Launcher pre-installed, so you'd figure, awesome, right? John's not gonna complain here. You, my friend, are wrong. Not awesome because it limits you to four icons down plus the dock, which makes zero sense for device this resolution. Icons just look way too far spaced out. On the Note 5 or Galaxy S6 Edge Plus, for example, if you install the Google Now Launcher, you get five down plus the dock. It makes a really big deal to me. Fortunately though, I've got Nova to get me almost there. Now onto the neutrals, things you need to know about the device that aren't good or bad, they're just things that you need to know. The build quality. It does feel better than previous gens, but nothing memorable. It doesn't feel great, but not horrible. I include it here because people just ask me about it a lot. Next, performance. For me, it felt as zippy as anything else. I mean, it does have three gigs of RAM, but a Snapdragon 808. Brandon felt it was a bit sluggish, especially while multitasking. It's fast, but not blazing. Because I know you are all gonna ask, here are the benchmarks. 25,488 on Quadrant, and 47,749 on Antutu 571. So what's the verdict? Is it a perfect phone? Nope, but it's a damn good one. When Brent and I were discussing what we wanted to talk about in the review, I made the analogy that the Moto X is like the Camry of phones. It's not flashy, doesn't have any curved screens or other gimmicks, but it's going to be reliable and it's going to do what it's supposed to do without turning many heads. So the question I asked at the beginning, would I buy this? If I had a $400 budget to buy a phone, then yes, I absolutely would. I would customize the color and casing to make it absolutely uniquely mine. Motorola has a hit on their hands, and at least you don't need an invite to buy this guy. This gets an 8.5 on the Techno Buffalo scale. So what do you guys think? Do you agree, disagree? Am I off base? Love to hear your thoughts on it. Maybe even a civil discussion down below. Until next time, I'm John Ranger from Techno Buffalo. See you guys in the next video.